This is a short and sweet video on boiling point. And we all know boiling point is the temperature at which something boils or changes from a liquid into a gas. But now we're going to look at how vapor pressure affects boiling. So it says here that the boiling point is the temperature at which the vapor pressure of the liquid equals the atmospheric pressure. Think about it like this. Let's say I want to boil a beaker of water. Uh, so here's going to be a beaker. Well, that's excellent. We'll put some water in it. And then underneath, maybe our heat source is a Bunsen burner. Oh, here's the flames. Look at that. Okay, so now as we heat this liquid, we know that the vapors created will cause some pressure. If this were a closed container, we would eventually have an equilibrium vapor pressure where those gas particles could collide with the surface of the liquid again and re-enter the liquid phase. So eventually we get this consistent vapor pressure in a closed container. Now obviously if the container is not closed and I'm heating these water particles or whatever the liquid might be, they'll change from a liquid to a gas, but then there's nothing to force them back into the liquid phase. There's nothing that necessarily forces them to re-collide with the surface of the liquid. Okay, so I'm heating this liquid and I'm getting pressure from these particles entering the gas phase. In order for them to truly enter the gas phase, this pressure from the liquid needs to at least be equal to the atmospheric pressure. So here's the pressure from the liquid. We'll call it vapor pressure. But then there's another force that's acting upon these vapors, and that's the downward atmospheric pressure. Atmospheric pressure. So again, in order for these gas particles to truly be stable in the gas phase, this vapor pressure needs to at least be equal to the pressure pushing down on those vapors from the atmosphere. So that's kind of this new definition of boiling point. The temperature at which the vapor pressure of the liquid at least equals the atmospheric pressure. And we know that as we increase the temperature, we increase the vapor pressure of the liquid. And it kind of explains here that this vapor pressure of the bubbles, the gas coming from within the liquid, has to be greater than or equal to the atmospheric pressure in order to overcome that downward pressure of the atmosphere that would tend to keep the particles in the liquid phase. Now, we can also define what's called a normal boiling point, and that would be the temperature at which the vapor pressure of the liquid is exactly one atmosphere. This one atmosphere is kind of considered like standard pressure. And you'll hear that more when we get into the gas laws. Standard pressure is usually one atmosphere or 760 millimeters mercury, which could also be the same as a tor. Those are all units of pressure. 760 tor. I'll mark that in. Again, 760, that's a 7. Tor is the same as 760 millimeters mercury, the same as one atmosphere. And again, it's kind of considered standard pressure. So the normal boiling temperature is the temperature where the vapor pressure equals one atmosphere. And then boiling should occur. We've got the vapor pressure at least equal to the atmospheric pressure. I know sometimes you can get this off a graph. So here is uh, liquid. This happens to be water. And I can tell that as I increase the temperature, I increase the vapor pressure. And if they ever gave you a graph and said, what is the normal boiling point? I would either look for one atmosphere or 760 tor or millimeter mercury. So here's my one atmosphere. And I can follow that across. And boom. Here's my boiling point, 100 degrees. So I know it's water. Uh, you can also kind of see that there was a graph that we looked at on a previous slide. And so here the pressure is in millimeters mercury. And this line going across, this is supposed to represent about 760 
millimeters of mercury. So as I follow this across, it's got the normal boiling points marked in for these three liquids. Again, the water boils at about 100, the ethanol boils at about 78, and this ether boils at about 35 degrees. So again, as I hit that standard atmospheric pressure, the temperature of the vapor pressure at that point is kind of considered our normal boiling point. Now since boiling temperature then, boiling point, is related to atmospheric pressure, that's why if we're boiling at higher elevations, the boiling temperature, the boiling point changes. So for example, if I'm up in the mountains and the atmospheric pressure is less than one atmosphere, well then there's less atmospheric pressure pushing down on those vapors. It takes less energy to increase the vapor pressure to the point where it at least equals the atmospheric pressure. Kind of makes sense. I don't need the vapor pressure to be so great because I don't have to overcome as much atmospheric pressure so I can boil the liquid at a lower temperature. 